Well, the UN's refugee agency is warning a larger crisis lies ahead for Afghanistan that hundreds of thousands of people could try to flee the country in the coming months. Now, right now, the international airlift is winding down. UK troops, diplomats and officials are now out of Kabul. US forces are set to pull out tomorrow. While rescue flights continue today, thousands of other Afghans are trying to escape by road into Pakistan. CBC News senior correspondent Susan Ormiston is in a refugee camp in Pakistan and tells us why the country's leader say they cannot take in more people. We're standing in what's called the Afghan village in Islamabad, Pakistan, and this camp has been here for more than a decade as the war in Afghanistan sent thousands fleeing into Pakistan over the years. There are about 3,000 people here, and currently we know of one family who arrived here in the last couple of days with an ill mother. She's at the hospital today, but so far Pakistan has kept his borders closed, both to the west of here and down south in Shaman, Pakistan, where there are reportedly thousands and thousands of refugees trying to squeeze through the Spinboldak crossing there and get into Pakistan. But there are 1.4 million refugees already here in this country, and the government does not want to house thousands more. So for the moment, those borders are closed, except for the very few who are able to get through over land. And the commercial airport in Kabul, of course, is still closed to uh, commercial flights. So there's no other way to get out of Afghanistan except overland to borders like Pakistan, Iran and Turkey. And they're all bracing for, for more crowds at those borders. Now, the Taliban is promising to allow foreign nationals and Afghans with travel documents to leave the country. Uh, Pakistan is the closest border by land. What could that mean? Well, you know, there were a hundred countries, including Canada, that signed that statement with the Taliban yesterday, saying that it would assure people with visa documents and foreign nationals to leave. But again, the problem is that checkpoint at the airport, it, the airport is not functioning yet for anybody except U.S. military planes at the moment. And so they're going to have to get the airport operating and uh, secure it in order for people to actually leave. So it does leave this question, this vacuum of people not being able to get out of the country. And as I said, these borders are seemingly closed for the moment. That may change, but at the moment there's a backlog still trying to get out. And that's if the Taliban keeps its word to allow people with documents and foreign nationals to get out. Now that said, what is the latest uh, from your understanding uh, on the ground in and around Kabul? Yeah, well, at the Kabul airport this morning, the evacuation continued. You know, we're about 24 hours, 36 hours away from the deadline for the U.S. to get out of Afghanistan. And they have promised that they will end that evacuation. We're told that military flights were leaving every 20 minutes or so this morning. But the U.S. did intercept a rocket barrage earlier today. Uh, at least five rockets fired uh, from around the airport, seemingly targeting the airport. They instead landed in a neighborhood uh, next to the airport. They were fired from a vehicle, apparently. There are pictures circulating of a burned-out uh, vehicle with five or six uh, rocket tubes in the back, and authorities believe that's where the rockets came from. So still a very tense situation. You know, Joe Biden, the president, has said that these last few days are one of the most dangerous in the whole mission. But we're now seeing, of course, the end of this official vac evacuation, and we still don't have a Taliban government in control in Afghanistan. They promise one soon. They say they may announce their cabinet soon. But there's so much insecurity and fear now still about what that government is going to look like and what happens as of Wednesday when the U.S. has vacated Afghanistan. Susan, thank you for that.